All right, in this video we're checking out the 1S uh, Baby Tooth. This is from uh, FPV Cycle, at least most of the parts are. I'll link all the parts that I use down in the description. Not everything came from that store, but this is a pretty uh, you know, unique design, obviously for 1S, and it's gonna be on these 1S 600s. I also got from FPV Cycle. They come with the XD30 already soldered on. You can buy these um, with the PH2 connector and um, put, put on your own XD30s if you prefer to do that. I think they're out of stock right now, so that may be your only choice. Uh, obviously the 1S spec here is going to be using these motors. This is the key to the setup here is the 1202.5 11,500 kV motors. These are made by RCN Power for FPV cycle and this has a 2 millimeter shaft so you have to get the 2 millimeter gem fans that come from the FPV cycle store. The or you also get the one and a half millimeter gem fans. These are the 30 16 by threes and uh, drill out the hole, but then there's a pretty good chance your prop might be unbalanced. So just get the props over there. I think those are still in stock. Um, using the unibody BB tooth frame here uh, in the two millimeter size to obviously keep the weight down. That's what the one S spec calls for is a two millimeter frame. So nice frame, good design, nice and solid. Um, well cut. This was, I think, uh, cut by Beta FPV. It's good carbon. Nothing too, nothing too fancy. It's not chamfered. Uh, I guess uh, the edges aren't chamfered or anything like that. So nothing too fancy. But obviously he did that to keep the cost down. I think the frame isn't too expensive, like fourteen dollars, something like that. And I've crashed this a bunch, and you can't even tell. This thing's so light, you can't even tell that anything happened. As long as you're flying it over grass, if you uh, feel safe over concrete then yeah something might break but you know that's that's how it goes with these things but even then I don't think that there's a chance that things are going to be breaking. You have pretty good motor protection here because of the design on the frame a little pointy thing sticking out so it should protect that bell. This is a pretty small motor so you know any direct hits are going to ding it up pretty good and I'm just using a rubber band and some sticky stuff on the bottom to hold the battery um, yeah, if you want a video on how to do the rubber band thing, I have that as well. I'll link that down in the description. How do you guys like the matching color rubber band tuning lights to the motors, huh? Anyway, I'm using a different uh, 1S board. Um, this is the Crazy B uh, F4 Lite. It's the same board that comes in the Mobula 6. So it has the onboard receiver and onboard video transmitter, but because I had to, because of the design of the frame, I had to flip the board over so the USB port comes out of the top. There's no hole in the bottom for the USB port. So you have to flip it over. You have to do some resource mapping of your motors so that obviously everything's going to be just all disoriented. So you have to flip it over in the flight controller and remap your motors and then everything will work fine. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm not because of this. Because I flipped it over, I all you know the antennas for the video transmitter and the receiver are under the bottom. So I wasn't flying so great. I was getting a very poor range on the built-in receiver once I flipped the um, antenna over to the other side. Because basically, it's it's you know it's under between the board there and the carbon, and that carbon is blocking the signal. So I added a XM receiver here. This is not the XM Plus. I wanted to keep it light. So it's just a single antenna here and the range issues are fixed. I'm using the Runcam Nano 2, or sorry, Runcam Nano 3. Very hard camera to find right now. Uh, it's a good camera, very good in, in, in good lighting conditions and uh, low lighting conditions, eh, not so great. And it has to do with the fact that it's tiny lens. And I'm using this, um, uh, I guess this newbie drone camera mount here. You just have to sort of clip off the ends here with some wire, or with some clippers. Uh, shorten that up otherwise it's going to get into your camera view. And then I have a rubber band right here to hold the camera in because I kind of got a little bit too aggressive on the clips back here to mount the camera so it wasn't going all the way in. And then just using the uh, included the screws here goes all the way up through the grommets for the flight controller. Then I'm using some nylon screws right there to hold the flight controller down. That's all around here. So I got one in the back and uh, three in the front. And then I'm just using the screw to screw into the camera mount there. And you can see here, I'm still using the motor plugs. And these motors did come with the plugs. Now I think because uh, the spec calls for this to be 53 grams all the weight, I think the only way we can get to that weight is by 
by cutting the wires off and shortening the wires and removing the plugs as well as on the on the motor as well as on the board to get that weight down because I'm coming in at 50 almost 57 grams all up weight here so you would think that with the video transfer being built in it would be less but it's actually more so we're at 41 grams yeah almost at 56.6 grams almost 57 grams with um, everything so I think it's possible because uh, on on, on uh, Bob's spec, he was using the Beta FPV 1S board that has the built-in receiver and that possibly has better range on that receiver. It doesn't have a built-in video transmitter, so he's still using a nano video transmitter. And everything else is the same, so uh, basically I'm trading the weight of uh, this XM receiver for the video transmitter because the video transmitter is built into this crazy board. So, yeah, um, I'm thinking that You'll have to, if you want to get down to the 53 gram spec, you got to cut off the motor wires and also remove the plugs, which is not easy to do. <laughs> you got to be really good at soldering, and I'm pretty good at it, and I find it to be quite challenging, very difficult, time, very time consuming. You have to basically pull one pin out at a time. Uh, it takes a while. Um, but yeah, if you want to get the weight down, then that's what you got to do. But I can tell you that even though it's about four grams over spec, it flies completely fine. Now I did, um, I am flying this on Betaflight 411. I did flash the um, RPM filter uh, firmware for VLL SEUCs. It's not the 48 kilohertz, it's 24 kilohertz. I forget which firmware it is. It's the one that, it's the one that matches the ones on board the Crazy Beat board. And so I have RPM filter turned on. Um, basically just follow the settings that I put in on my RPM filter video and I believe I didn't even touch the PIDs. It flies totally fine on just stock Betaflight PIDs with the RPM filter setup that I um, put in the video that I made earlier and that seemed to uh, work just fine. It flies really well on just stock PIDs. I was expecting to adjust the PIDs. Now if you want to use an older version of Betaflight 357 Obviously you won't have the RPM filter um, and you'll have to use the PIDs that Bob provided. Those PIDs are much higher. They're like over 100 for P, I think like 120, something like that. They're up on, on, the, uh, on the Facebook page. I think it's also up on the FPV Cycle page if you want the PIDs for the 1S Baby 2 setup. So anyway, overall this was a really easy build. I, I think I put this together in about 30 minutes because everything's plug and play. You just screw the motors in. The board's all plug and play, I plug in the motors, and the only thing, the only soldering it is I just changed the connector for the run cam on uh, Nano 3 so that it would match the one on uh, this, this connector here instead of the other one. That was the longest, I think took the longest, and then uh, maybe like five minutes for that, and then I changed the battery connector from the PH2 connector to the XT30, and uh, that was it. I mean, it was, everything's plug and play. So this is one of the easiest simple builds, especially if you're using the Crazy B light board. Anyway, I'm going to um, show you all of the parts down in the description as well as links to the RPM filter quick start guide. You get that on there. And I will also put a CLA dump with all of my settings on here. So if you use the exact same parts I'm using here and you're flipping the board over like the crazy bee, then my CLA dump, CLA dump will work for you. If you're using any other parts and you're not flipping the board over or whatever, <laughs> you may have some problems. So just be careful because I'm doing a lot of changes to the board with resource mapping and orientation changes that may not match your exact setup. So you gotta basically build it exactly the way I'm building it here with all the parts I listed down below if you wanna use my CLA dump. Or if you wanna use my CLA dump. Otherwise, you might run into some problems. But there, those things are down there for you if you guys wanna match it up. And you'll see what it flies like. Um, it's a lot of fun, super quiet. And uh, if you wanna be sort of stealth and not bother people, fly it out in a park around people, that kind of thing, uh, you definitely won't get noticed. Uh, they'll just wonder who the guy is with the goggles and walk over and ask you questions, which happens a lot to me. So, Anyway, that's enough for this uh, video. I will have, um, um, I guess, more videos on the toothpick stuff from FPV Cycle. I've got the 1303 motors. I'm, I've got the frame coming for the, um, I guess it's the original design that has the modular arms. That's all coming in future videos, so stay tuned for those. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. All right, so kind of at a quieter spot here, away from cars. 
so you can hear what this uh, sounds like. It's really quiet. I'm trying to get really close here. I'm not even sure if it will come out on the microphone at all. If I'm like within about 10 feet, you can hear it. Go a little further away. I can't even hear it at all now. Oh, by the way, this is just a basic RPM filter tune. Um, I'm not sure if I put that video out yet or not. It might be before or after this video. But, uh, default Betaflight PIDs. And I just followed the RPM filter wiki on, on GitHub, I think. So this has got some real basic settings. I haven't really done any tuning. I just lowered the rates. I think I put in the rates for the Mobulus 6 on here. Should, it should be higher. But still very pliable. You get really good flight times. A little bit of a vulture sag there. Eh? It just kind of just floats down. Let's see if I can just hover it without so 28, 30% throttle here. I can barely hover it right up to my mic. If you just want to cruise around, you can probably milk this battery for at least six minutes, if not longer. I think I'm getting towards the end of the battery. 3.2 volts, four and a half minutes. Yep, I'm gonna land it. What do you guys think of this thing? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> the voltage just died there. <laughs> 